Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, we are going to discuss two important topics, structure and composition of virus and one step growth of virus. So firstly, let us discuss about structure and composition of virus and later let us discuss about the second topic. So coming to this virus, virus, normally virus is made up of two major components, nucleic acid genome and protein capsid. And this nucleic acid genome and protein capsid together uh, constitutes to form nucleocapsid. Actually, this nucleic acid genome is nothing but the genetic material which is present in the virus. And this nucleic acid genome will be covered or else will get protected by this protein capsid. And this together, uh, it is called as nucleocapsid. And firstly, let us discuss about this nucleic acid genome and then later, let us discuss about this protein capsid. So now, this nucleic acid genome is also called as a viral genome. Right, so the genome which is present in the virus is called as a viral genome and the genome may be either in the form of a DNA or else it can be either in the form of a RNA, right? So it can be either in the form of DNA or RNA, right? And even the types of DNA, we know the types of DNA, right? Double standard DNA, single standard DNA and other structures of the DNA will be present. And in this, all of these forms of DNA, this viral genome is, uh, this viral genome is made. And in the form of double standard DNA, it can be in the form of linear or else circular. And in the form of this single standard DNA of this viral genome, it can be either in the form of linear or else circular. And other structures include this gerabbed circles, right? And see, in many viral genomes, there is a presence of genetic material in the form of RNA. And even this RNA will be also of two types, double standard D RNA and single standard RNA. And double standard RNA can be in the linear form. And coming to the single standard RNA, Single standard RNA will be of two types, positive sense, single standard RNA and negative sense, single standard RNA. Sense is nothing but the strand which is present in the form of direct mRNA. So if you see here, sense is nothing but the strand which is present in the form of mRNA. So mRNA is nothing but, for example, if you see in the previous explanation which I have said you about transcription, right? In transcription is a process where the DNA will get converted to the mRNA which I have said you, right? And here the strand as it is present in the form of RNA, it can directly translate that RNA strand to the proteins, right? And the process is called as translation. So in the form, if the virus is present in the form of DNA, then it should undergo the process of transcription and then later it forms the mRNA and then it undergoes the translation to form the proteins. But if the virus genome is, uh, is, is made up of RNA, then it can directly form the proteins because, uh, uh, because of the process of the translation, right? So here the sense is nothing but the strand or else it is in the form of mRNA which can directly form the proteins. So the positive sense, single standard RNA and negative sense, single standard RNA are the types of uh, single standard RNA, right? And this is about the nucleic acid genome or as the viral genome which is present in the viruses. And now coming to this protein capsid, right? So firstly, we have discussed about the nucleic acid genome and second, we are going to discuss about this protein capsid. So viral genomes are surrounded by protein shells called as capsids, right? So if you see the diagram, so this is the diagram of the bacteriophage virus and this will be the diagram of retrovirus and if you see here this is the viral genome the pink color which i have indicated is nothing but the viral genome and this viral genome is surrounded by the capsid proteins right it is surrounded by the capsid proteins and even if you see in the case of retrovirus this is the genetic material or as this is a viral genome and it will be surrounded by the capsid protein right it will be surrounded by the capsid protein so that's what we have mentioned here. The viral genomes are surrounded by the protein shells called as capsids or as it is also called as capsid proteins, right? So normally these capsids consist of repeating subunits. It consists of repeating subunits or as it consists of polymeric subunits, okay? And those polymeric subunits or as repeating subunits are called as protomers, right? So here, so based on these repeating subunits, we can classify the structure of the uh, structure of this virus in two forms helical structure and icosahedral structure right so here coming to this helical structure so the uh, if the capsid is present in the form of helical structure then these viruses are called as helical virus and if the capsids are present in the form of icosahedral structure then those viruses are called as icosahedron virus and the best example of these helical viruses are tmv tobacco mosaic virus and coming to the examples of this icosahedron virus polio virus rhinovirus adenovirus so these are the best examples of helical virus as well as the icosahedron virus so now let us see the classification of the viruses 
based on the combination of characteristics viruses are classified as first one morphology morphology is nothing but uh, the size of the virus the shape of the virus uh, all of this comes under the classification of this morphology and physiochemical properties includes the thermal stability and the molecular mass see thermal stability is nothing but if the temperature is high whether the virus can survive or not it depends upon the temperature right so if the temperature is more uh, in ma majority of the viruses i am saying if the temperature is more then the virus cannot survive and this is thermal stability and this comes under the uh, classification of this physiochemical properties and coming to this genome genome is nothing but the genetic material which is present in that virus i have said you right the dna and rna are the genome type of genomes which are present in the viruses and which type of genome is present in that virus comes under this classification of the genome and coming to this proteins i mean the number of the proteins and the size of the proteins which are produced after the translation of that rna or else or a dna right and it comes under this proteins and lipids so what is the content of the lipids and what is the character of that lipids uh, even the same it includes the carbohydrates what is the what is the quality of that carbohydrates actually and what is the content which is present in the carbohydrates and genome organization and replication strategy is nothing but the genome organization is nothing but here already we have discussed that uh, whether the dna is present or as rna is present in the form of a genetic material in the virus that comes under the genome organization and replication strategy is nothing but the transcription and translation process if the dna is present in the r uh, in the in the form of genetic material in the viruses then it undergoes transcription as well as a translation so that is the replication strategy and if there is a rna which is present in the virus then it undergoes a translation to form the proteins so in this way the replication strategies can be performed in both dna as well as the rna so this includes in the under the classification of this genome organization and the replication strategies and coming to this antigenic properties see uh, for example uh, there is a vaccines for many viruses and if a person is suffering from a highly attenuated virus then the person will be injected with a vaccine and the uh, the here this virus will act as an antigen and once the once this all of this vaccines are introduced into those body then those will act as antibody so that antigen and antibody complex will form together to fight against the disease right so that comes under the classification of this antigenic properties and coming to this biological properties see biological properties nothing but the host range so to multiply the number of these viruses it requires a host right and and that host range comes under the classification of the biological properties and it also includes a mode of transmission that's nothing but uh, like if you see whether the virus should transmit from one person to other person either orally or as through air so that comes under the classification of this biological properties so host range as well as the mode of transmission comes under the classification of this biological properties so this is about the classification of the virus based on the combination of its characteristics so now let us see one more classification based on the genome organization so based on this genome organization the virus can be classified into six classes and all of this i have discussed previously itself it comes uh, it it consists of six classes right it consists of six classes coming to the class one double stranded dna genomes and coming to the class two single stranded dna genomes class three double stranded rna genomes class four positive strand rna genomes and class five negative strand rna genomes which i have said you previously right the single standard of rna will be of two types i have said you positive sense single standard rna and negative sense single standard rna so what is the other name of this sense nothing but the strand that's what we have uh, discussed here the class 4 comes uh, with positive strand rna genomes and class 5 comes with negative strand rna genomes and class 6 comes with the retrovirus so what is this retrovirus let us see in this diagram so firstly you have to know about the diagram of this uh, bacteriophage this is a diagram of the bacteriophage which is presented over left side here and this is a diagram of the retrovirus and coming to the diagram of this bacteriophage here here this is a pink color which is nothing but the viral genome and it is surrounded with a capsid protein right and this is a neck region actually this both constitutes together to form the head head part or as head region and this is your neck region and this is your tail sheath and this will be your end plate and all of these are nothing but the tail fibers and these are the pins so what are the main functions of this tail fibers and this end plate and what are these pins actually so to multiply the number of this uh, genome then what will happen is that it will search for a host this bacteriophage will search for a host and once it select the host then it binds to the host and then this tail fibers will fix this bacteriophage to that host right if you see in the case of the lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle then you can understand this concept 
this host as well as this virus concept you can understand once if you watch my previous video of this lytic and lysogenic cycle so it has been already explained and the link will be provided in the description box and this end plate what will it reset it will fix towards that uh, host and then what will happen then the viral genome will start moving from this tail sheet and it will enter into the host and in that host this viral genome will get multiplied along with the capsid protein right so this is what happens at the bacterial phase and if you see in the case of this retrovirus recently we have uh, we have many people who have been attacked with coronavirus right covid 19 and it is just my assumption that that coronavirus will be either in the form of the retrovirus it will be in the form of the retrovirus it's just my assumption proper uh, theory was not yet provided but it's just my assumption that's it so if you see this is a retrovirus and this is a capsid protein inside the viral genome will be present and once it enter into the body then this viral genome if it is present in the form of dna or as it is present in the rna then it will get converted into proteins right by the uh, process of the translation then that proteins which are uh, produced by this viral genome it will get infected by the uh, you know, it will get infected to the body actually why because they are harmful proteins even this virus is a harmful so once this dna and rna are uh, you know translated to proteins then those proteins called as a negative proteins which are very harmful to the body right so this is about the bacteriophage as well as the retrovirus so enough let us learn about the one step growth of virus so enough let us discuss about one step growth of virus so before learning this topic i strongly recommend you people to learn about lytic and lysogenic cycle which has been already provided previously the link will be given in the description box so please watch that video and what is the main purpose of this lytic and lysogenic cycle is it mainly helps in increasing the number of the viruses right and once the number of the viruses will get increased then the person who is infected with the particular virus he will get diseased more and more right and he will also lead to death so and that increase in the increase in the number of that virus will be assumed in the form of a graph which is called as one step growth of virus right so now let us see the graph how it will be represented so we know that the graph consists of two axes this is your x axis and this will be a y axis and on the x axis you are going to take time after the infection and on the y axis you are going to take number of infectious particles number of infectious particles are nothing but the number of virus particles right and by taking this time after infections i mean the time lapse as well as the number of virus particles you are going to plot the graph and once the graph will be plotted then this is the graph which will be obtained so this graph consists of two periods latent period rise period so here what is mean by this latent period i mean this rise period is also called as a burst size right and what is this latent period actually the time lapse between the infection and the release of progeny is called as a latent period so infection is nothing but once the virus will enter into the body then it starts the infection so how the infection will be started by the release of progeny progeny is nothing but the newly formed rna uh, sorry the newly formed uh, this virus particles will be generated right and those are called as progeny and the time lapse which is present between that infection the entry of a virus and the release of the progeny is called as a latent period right and coming to this burst size in this phase the number of phases are released numerously i mean here uh, here what we have discussed the release of progeny will be done up to there itself the latent period will be confirmed and now from there the burst size will begin where the number of the virus particles will get increased and that is called as the burst size so if you see the graph then you can understand clearly so this is a latent period where it will be stable means the virus will come and will attack the body but it was it doesn't shows any symptoms and even the virus will start its performance i mean it will start generating the its daughter individuals or else it starts the dividing or else it starts to increase its number right and that is called as a latent period right and here rise period is nothing but it will start the dividing but it will increase in more and more it's in its number it will increase more and more in its number it is called as rise period the name itself indicates that rise period is nothing but where the number of the virus particles will rise i will get increase and that is called as a burst size so why it is named as burst size actually see though let us see so if you see the lytic and lysogenic cycle then you can understand why it is called as a burst size but i am going to give you here a small uh, concept of this why it is called as a burst size what i have said you in the case of the bacteriophage it atta it uh, moves towards the host cell and it attacks the host cell uh, to replicate i mean to increase the number of that virus particles i have said you right and it will enter into the uh, or else uh, i mean the viral genome which is present in the bacteriophage will enter into the host right so this is your host cell and in the host cell the number of that virus will get increased 
and once the virus particles will get increased in the host cell then this host cell membrane will get burst it will get uh, you know it will get broken down such that the virus particles which are present in this host cell will move or else will get protruded out and it will be released and once they are released then it cause harm to your body i mean the person who is infected with a particular virus so this is about your one step growth of virus so thank you for watching this video if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box thank you